Okay. All righty. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the October meeting of the MAC. Super glad that you could all be here and that everybody's got power and is able to join us from wherever you might be. Some people have gotten to, had to be kind of creative during these times, but we're really glad that you're all here. Um, we'll start with a uh, roll call and the meeting is called to order at 6.33. And we are working on our Facebook feed. I also want to let you know that Spanish language translation is available for this meeting. Hay interpretación en español para los que necesitan esta noche. Um, so thank you all for being here again. So we'll do roll call. Um, Vice Chair Ray Willette. Here. Thank you. Council Member of Ram Goldman. Here. Council Member Mari Carmen Reyes. Here. Council Member Ellen Conlon. Here. Council Member Ryan Laley. Here. Council Member John Wheatley. Here. And Council Member Iris Lombard. Present. Thank you. Again, thank you all for being here. Uh, we'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance. So, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. And thank you, Susan, for leading that pledge. <laughs> so, we have approval of the minutes. Are there any adjustments that need to be made? I approve. Okay, hearing none, is there a motion to approve? I motion to approve. Is there a second? I second. So <laughs> Ellen first and Ryan second. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you all. So I have a little bit of technical issues happening. I can't see the entire panel. So Vice Chair Willette is going to call on people when you want to speak because I can only see the speaker for some reason. So just to let you know, it's not that I'm um, not fully present. I just can't see you all. So thank you again for being here. Um, we want to open up for public comment for anything that is not on the agenda. So is there any public comment at this time? Uh, for those members of the audience who wish to make a public comment, please use the raise hand feature and I will allow you to speak. We will call on you. Para los miembros de la audiencia que desean hacer un comentario público, por favor usen eh, la aplicación de levantar mano y se les va a asignar el permiso para dar su comentario. At this moment, I don't see any raised hand. I may through the I'd like to make a public comment. Karina, go right ahead. <laughs> uh, Supervisor Gorin would like to invite, and I'm sure she'll talk about this later, but she would like to invite you all to a um, community conversation, Charla Comunitaria. It is all in Spanish and it's about COVID um, information, updates, resources, financial assistance, and testing. We will have a special celebrity guest, Juan Maragan from Azteca. And I will say this in Spanish as well. And this is uh, Thursday, October 29th from 5.30 to 7 p.m. We hope that our Spanish speaking community will attend. Eh, quiero hacer un comentario público con una invitación de parte de la supervisora Susan Gorin para este jueves 29 de octubre de 5 y media a 7 de la tarde para asistir a la charla comunitaria donde estaremos hablando sobre el COVID-19 Se estará dando una actualización, eh, información sobre recursos, asistencia financiera y dónde hacerse la prueba de COVID. Los invitamos a, a participar. Tendremos como invitado, uh, invitado especial a Juan Barragán de Azteca. Así que los esperamos. Thank you. Gracias. Thank you, Karina. So, no, uh, seeing no more public comment, um, I'll give you a quick update. 
uh, from the chair. And um, we will put a break in the meeting um, after the glass fire communication and outreach conversation. There'll be a short break before we go into the ad hoc and the possible reorganizing. Um, we will talk about the holiday schedule, um, community events announcements, and future agenda items. So for the update uh, from the chair, our conversation on race is not, we haven't stopped, but we're taking a little break tonight. Um, we will continue that work. Uh, we have invited the superintendent to participate um, and talk about her perspective from um, an educational standpoint. Uh, we need to um, have our holiday schedule in place for that to happen. So she's waiting to hear back from us on what our dates are for the holiday schedule. So, um, and then she will, um, will find time to meet with us. The annual report, Ryan and Ellen and I are still working on that annual report. I promise Susan that we will get it to you soon. Um, it's just taking a little bit of time to uh, get our arms around that, but we are, um, we are working on it and haven't forgotten about it. We do need uh, volunteers for interpreting. It is a big part of our budget. So if there's anyone who has people in the community who might be willing to donate a couple of hours of time to um, help us in the evening. Jordy does an amazing job and we don't want to not have him with us, but there are budgetary, um, we do have budgetary uh, restrictions or you know, parameters and uh, we just want to be able to use our funding as best as possible. So if there are volunteers available. Um, we have in the last couple of, actually in the last month or so, we've had a couple of different funding requests go out uh, to help with our emergency preparedness. And we're gonna talk about that at the ad hoc portion of this, some exciting news that I wanna share with everyone about some things that we have happening. Um, I think Ryan and Karina are gonna give an update on the Springs project. We know that that's of great interest to many council members. And Karina will give a short budget update. And then we also have uh, a couple of uh, community members came to talk to us about the Caltrans Highway 12 concerns. So Karina has an update on that as well. So I will turn this over to uh, Ryan and Karina for the Springs Project update. Thank you, Chair Ituri. Um, so as I understood, my updates would be specifically based on um, SBCAC hearings and uh, uh, meetings, and we did not have a meeting in September. Um, we had no items ready to be seen. We will be having our regularly scheduled meeting tomorrow evening via Zoom at 630, and we will be looking at um, the presentation on the City of Sonoma Urban Growth Boundary ballot measure. It will be presented by the Sonoma Planning Director, David Storer. And then we'll be hearing a presentation on the City of Sonoma's Retail Cannabis Dispensary, presented by Sonoma Planning Director, David Storer, as well. Uh, and these are receive items, so we will not be making any sort of motion on them, but it will be purely informational. Thank you, Ryan. Karina, is there anything you wanted to share? Yes. Um, the following updates are based on information received from Permit Sonoma as of October 22nd. The Siesta Project, also known as the Springs Senior Housing Project, um, use permit to close Oaks Mobile Home Park and provide relocation assistance to residents was approved by BZA in June 2020. Approval of park closure was contingent upon providing affordable housing. Project has been to design review as a concept item and the SBCAC and receive general support. The preliminary design review application is incomplete, but the project was recently sent out on referral to solicit agency comments. A design review meeting hearing will be held when application is complete and after project issues and environmental concerns are addressed. The applicant recently started community outreach and will be encouraged to host a neighborhood meeting. The next project update is on the spring specific plan. The spring specific plan is currently moving through the environmental review process and staff is now working toward completion of the draft environmental impact report. Now that the state has moved away from level of service as a CEQA issue, 
the county is now required to do an anal analysis of vehicle miles traveled. With grant funding secured from the state, local early action planning grant, the county is engaging a traffic consultant to assist with the completion of this VMT analysis. The public release of the DEIR is anticipated this winter. The following project is the SDC specific plan. The groundwork reports and community engagement summaries to date have been posted at the project website, sdcspecificplan.com. The community workshop originally scheduled for September 30th is being rescheduled to November, date to be confirmed. On December 15th, we will have a workshop before the Board of Supervisors. The next phase of the project will be the development of, treat of three site alternatives to be considered in creation of the prepared alternative, which will serve as the basis for the specific plan. Community outreach is ongoing. We will continue to work with our partners at the state on scheduling. Currently, the specific plan efforts is scheduled for completion by the end of 2021. Dominoes, UPE 20-007, uh, request for minor, minor use permit for a uh, 2,169 square foot takeout restaurant. Domino's Pizza is an existing commercial building. No exterior changes are proposed. Restaurant will operate seven days a week, Sunday through Thursday from 10 a.m. to midnight and Friday through Saturday from 10 a.m. to 1 a.m. With a total of 25 employees located on a 0.2 acre parcel. On May 27th, 2020, SVCAC denied the Domino's use permit request on a nine to one vote based off of concerns towards parking, traffic, garbage and delivery. After the SVCAC meeting, the applicant informed the project manager they are reconsidering their, their use permit application. No activity on the project since the SVCAC meeting. Boys Food Center. The Boys uh, Springs Food Center has 12 existing housing units and 3,000 square feet of commercial space. The proposed project would add 25 units, uh, eight de uh, deeds restricted affordable and 4,000 square of commercial space. The project was reviewed by the Planning Commission on August 6th and received a unanimous recommendation of approval. The Board of Supervisors, Supervisors will consider this recommendation at a public hearing on November 17th. Additional details can be found, <coughs> excuse me, additional details can be found on the project's website. Um, and I will put the website um, in the chat for our Minute taker, but that's Sonoma County dot GA dot GOV backslash PRMD backslash regulations backslash housing backslash projects back, uh, backslash boys dash springs dash food dash center backslash. Thank you. That is the report. Thank you, Karina. Did you want to do the budget update now? And the Caltrans? Absolutely. Um, and Thank I you. will share my screen real quick to um, show the budget update. Bear with me. Um, sorry, I have like 20 screens open. <laughs> Here we go. As of today, um, taking into consideration the invoices from um, the Minute Taker, Interpreter, and Broadcasting, and hello, KSBY, thank you, Bob. Um, the available amount for community projects is 7600 Thank you. And as far as the Caltrans um, traffic light update, um, I haven't received a new update since the last meeting, which is they're looking into it and they're doing an analysis um, before they can get back to us. That concludes my report. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, thanks for all of that. And thank you for getting the projects update for everyone. Really appreciate it. Uh, Supervisor Gorin, did you have anything you would like to share with us? Avram, did you have a question? I'm sorry. Mark. Oh, sorry. I, I did have a question. Um, I'm trying to f find where my hand thing is, but I. I, I <laughs> but uh, so I did the physical movement. Yeah, I'm sorry. I was um, muted. I should keep unmuted yeah. so I can help you. Yeah. Uh, Karina, thank you so much for that report. It's it's very very much appreciated. 
Um, I, I do have a question. I'm really curious. Um, it, the the project uh, right next, just uh, south of uh, El Molino, um, which was approved. Uh, it, sort of where is that at, or does PRMD is out of it at this point because they've started some work on it? Um, it's 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 the plot that um, they prepared. Uh, apparently, there was uh, sort of a container project. Maybe Supervisor Gordon knows more about that. I'm not really sure, but it would be good to sort of see where that is. Again, I don't know if PRMD sort of knows where that project is in terms of headed toward completion. Once it's once it's been approved, usually you know they they don't get involved until they're called for an inspection. So I don't know. And as of, um. I can only provide an update on what was provided from Permit Sonoma. Oh. I took that down, so I'm happy to investigate and report back next month. No, I, I appreciate that. Uh, and, and maybe I'll bring up later a suggestion mm -hmm. is to have a representative uh, from Matson's organization to talk about some of the projects that they're working on, including the boys uh, food center, but I'll bring that up later. Thank you. Supervisor Gorin, are there, Bray, are there any other questions at this point that you can I see? Does anyone else have any questions? I see no raised hands. Okay, thank you. Supervisor Gorin, do you have anything you'd like to share with us? It's such a pleasure to be with you tonight and really need to thank Karina for uh, her excellent work in staffing and per reporting uh, on tonight. Thank you so much. I don't know what I would do without you. You're, you're a godsend uh, to all of us. Uh, so thank you so much. I need to begin this meeting on an incredible note of congratulations to our chair, Maite Aturi, North Bay Spirit winner. Uh, it was such a pleasure to see the video. Uh, Celeste uh, posted it on uh, Facebook. If you haven't seen the incredible video about Camita uh, Paratodos, we need to thank you. You are amazing. Um, they didn't even talk about the fact that I think you are chair of this, this municipal advisory committee. What? They're, they're lauding you for something else? You should receive a uh, an award for just this, <laughs> this venture. Uh, but it, it was truly a well done video and really need to thank Logan Harvey for nominating you for the Spirit Award, richly deserved. And thank you, we are so honored to have you in the Springs community and really wanna thank you and all of the incredible volunteers that have been so successful in organizing Camita para Todos, because I remember when the conversation was, okay, we have the food distribution, but we know that we have people who cannot access food. What are we going to do? And obviously you and a whole host of folks pick that up and with your heart and soul and energy and delivering those brown bags, truly amazing and Thank you. Well, as you said, it is a whole host of people that make it all happen, but thank you very much. I appreciate that. This is um, the sort of the highlight of my week after uh, navigating through fires, power shutdowns, and COVID. It's been a really, really challenging year for all of us. And um, we're so grateful that Maite was recognized for her work, but the Sonoma Valley is an incredible place. Uh, whenever there's an issue, you all come together and figure out how to do it. And I want you to know that I really brag about the incredible efforts of all of you uh, to the other supervisors. I know there are dribs and drabs of people doing things, but Sonoma Valley truly has it all together. And I really wanna thank each and every one of you for your passion during this year. Um, Ariel, uh, our, our field representative, is staffing the fire survivors virtual conversations. And we started the first one last night, uh, giving a sort of an overview of what to expect. Yes, we are experienced at this. If you know anybody who lost a home in the fire, 
please give them, give their contact information to us. We want to make sure that they receive an invitation to our virtual town halls, which will be every other week, alternating with, okay, you're going to laugh at me. Let me see. Um, Chuck Chardla, <laughs> Kamudataria. <laughs> She's worked so hard and my pronunciation is so poor. Um, I'm gonna hire her to tutor me in Spanish uh, and maybe I'll improve by Thursday night, but please do pop in, especially those folks who are Spanish speaking. This idea comes from Karina and she and Mary Carmen and Maite and Juan from Lalu Center all got together and pulled this together to respond to the fact that we are never going to move out of the purple zone unless we get serious about looking at all areas of infection for COVID. And there are many, many, many people in Sonoma Valley and elsewhere just, we don't care, open us up, our businesses are failing. And yes, that's right. I am concerned about our businesses. I am also concerned about the people who cannot afford rent and groceries during COVID. I'm also concerned about our kids who are distance learning with totally inadequate Wi-Fi and, and few hotspots as, as Maite can tell you about firsthand. I don't think, well, I know we've had conversations with Gayla Barron about the Spanish flu in 1918. And I don't, few of you knew that the entire community, much smaller at the time, were shut down for four years. They tried to open and the flu came back and they shut it down again. Schools were closed. And that flu was really affecting not necessarily the older folks, but the younger folks and the working folks. And so they took it seriously and we lost millions and millions of people around the world. And I'm hopeful that we are not going to lose millions and millions and millions, but we are losing too many. And I take COVID very seriously. It doesn't matter whether you lose a loved one, an older parent, or suffer a debilitating life condition uh, for a long time. We treat this very seriously. So. I hope you are engaging in conversations with your friends and colleagues, especially those folks who are not wearing masks, are arguing with the supervisor about not wearing masks, <laughs> and arguing with the supervisor to just open up this business, this business, this business. I say the infection rate in the Sonoma Valley is about 11 or 12%. We could shut down the, we could build a wall around the valley, but nevertheless, we still have that infection rate that are affecting people. So it's really difficult. And uh, thank you for the opportunity uh, to do a little emoting. It's been a challenging year and you are one of the bright lights of my year. I'm counting the days till I'm no longer chair. <laughs> and I'm demanding a recount. What do you mean you voted for me for supervisor? Elect that other guy. <laughs> four more years, this too shall pass. And thank you all uh, for your passion and your energy and your commitment to making life better in the Springs and working with a community that absolutely needs to come together to approach this with the seriousness that it deserves. So thank you all. And um, I'm done with my lecture tonight and on with your business. Thank you for allowing me some time. Oh, one more thing. Um, if you happen to go on socoemergency.org, there is a special section in there for COVID with a couple of different uh, boxes. Click on SOS. That is the six strategies that we have approved as supervisors to really get down and to approach uh, the source and the transmission of COVID with some financial stipends for testing and for quarantining. And we absolutely need to thank Mary Carmen and our Sonoma Valley Health Center uh, for, for all of her their work on the pop-up testing. Uh, they are caring for our members. And thank you, Mary Carmen. Please convey my thank you to Cheryl. So go on there, look at all of the strategies, send them out to your friends, 
we we need to get serious. So I'm I'm ending on a really cheerful note. I know. <laughs> Sorry, I should have ended with uh, the congratulations to Maite. So thank you. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you, Supervisor Gorin, for taking the time to chat with us. We appreciate it. And um, okay, so we'll continue on with our agenda. Um, we, I was talking to Avram the other day and he suggested that we needed to create some space to talk about how the communication and outreach happened during the glass fire. It seems so long ago because we've had so many other things happen between that and where we are now. Uh, but it's all kind of a cumulative um, trauma. So it's, it's ongoing and it seems to continue. So it's an opportunity for if there's pub, public comment about um, how things went for folks during that time. Um, this is an opportunity for us to hear from people, also to hear from the, um, the council members, their, their perspective. Um, so we'll start with any public comment. We'll hear from council members and then we'll move back to public comment if there's anything else. And this is just a public record that we can share with Supervisor Gorin and other folks in the county so they can get a sense of how things happened here in the Valley. So again, I'm gonna need help with people hand raising because I cannot see you all. If I may, Chair Ituri, um, I'd like to announce in Spanish in case someone Thank you. connected. Um, para todas las personas que desean escuchar la, uh, la reunión en español, tenemos interpretación disponible. Si van a la parte baja de su pantalla, al icono eh, titulado Interpretation o Interpretación, y hace clic y seleccione español para escuchar la reunión en español. Y en este momento vamos a estar tomando comentario público. Si desea hacer un comentario, por favor, use eh, la aplicación de levantar mano y se le asignará permiso para dar su comentario. Thank you, Karina. Absolutely. I do see a raised hand from the um, public. Fred Alabac, please oh. go ahead and make your comment. Good evening. Um, yes, I, I don't know if it's, uh, I wanted to make a comment on the last agenda item. I don't know if there was there public comment on that. But if I if I could, um, I just felt like there was a uh, project missing was the uh, mid pen portable housing project by the uh, Paul's field there. And I was curious what's up with that. That's all I had. Thank you. Thank you, Fred. We will Discuss that later and see if we could add it to the next briefing. Are there any comments about the glass fire communication and how things happen for folks here? I don't see any more raised hands. We can go to council members now. Great. Ray, you're going to have to help me out. Yep. Anybody want to raise their hand? Ellen? <laughs> Um, you know, overall, I thought that it was better communication than in the past. Um, one area of frustration, of course, is cell phone. Um, there not being some backup batteries to make sure that cell towers are still functioning. I think that is a critical issue. Um, for the most recent, if you don't mind me talking about this past Sunday night with the really, really high winds, at 2.30 in the morning with winds, like Gale Force winds up where I live, I was trying to find someone at PG&E that I could ask why they had not shut off the power. Um, because we had been told we would have power shut off. It did not go off. We've had incidents in this area before with down power lines. But what surprised me about it was that I didn't have uh, interruption of power to report. I didn't have an emergency to report. So there was no, um, I don't know, no access. I was told to call 9-11, but it didn't warrant a 9-11. Um, and obviously I understand why nobody's in administration at that hour in the morning, but it just seemed like that was something that was um, somewhat perilous, uh, that, that they had not uh, shut the power in the conditions where it should have been shut. So that concerned me. I, I, I don't know who would answer the phone at that time in the morning, but it seemed to me that they were working 
and that maybe somebody could have been available uh, to hear our concerns. Anybody else? Avram? I have, oh, okay. Ellen, can I, can, I, can I just ask a question? I'm sorry, I should have raised my hand. Uh, were there any fires that night? No. In, in I understand your concern. Were there fires? No. No. Okay. Thank you. No, we were fortunate. Fortunately. Go ahead, Abram. Uh, yeah. Thank you, and uh, Alan, uh, I'll, I'll second that emote uh, that uh, what you just said, and then I'll get to the glass fire. Um, Ellen doesn't live too far from me. And it seems like the demarcation point was Mountain Avenue. They didn't turn off Mountain Avenue. I live on Agua Caliente and um, they shut us off and we've been off ever since. Now the winds are exactly the same. So someone I think really needs to figure out how to communicate to PG&E that, you know, to know these locations and understand that it, it, it's critical because it, it, Ellen pointed out that uh, previously there was a fire at the top of, of Mountain Avenue uh, because of a down line. So I, I would hope that someone takes that back and has a discussion with somebody as to how to communicate with PG&E as to where they do their shutoffs. In, in regards to the uh, glass fire, um, the, the issue uh, we experienced here, I'll, I'll just give you a, an example. Um, I'm on Nixle both in Napa as well as Sonoma. Between September 29th and most recently, uh, I received 47 Nixle alerts from Napa. I received nine from Sonoma. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, on one, on October the 7th, there was, oh, it looks like our electricity is back on, the generator just cut off. Um, on October 7th, Sonoma sent out an alert. They sent it out 11 times. I got 11 messages. So something to me is probably not functioning real well at Nixle uh, for Sonoma. Um, I know I've had the discussion before and uh, with uh, Supervisor Gorin, and I understand that the Sheriff's Department is in charge of handling Nixle. Um, they're just not alerting us enough. And, um, uh, what I will say on that night, that Sunday night, and Mary Carmen, I'm almost finished. Um, on that Sunday night going into Monday morning, um, there was a lot of anxiety in, in our area. Um, the uh, evacuation area uh, got down as far as uh, the, the end of Arnold Road at Highway 12. Uh, but we were sort of unaware what was going on and our best source of information was Twitter. As a matter of fact, Sarah Stitch, I think Stritch, um, a former um, a journalist at uh, the IT, took it upon herself to really gather information and share that information. And God bless her, because it was, it was a, you know, I really understood what was going on. Um, as far as SoCo emergency, uh, we got two updates a day. But when the fire is moving so fast, that's just really not enough. So I would suggest uh, that there are better ways to communicate. Uh, maybe we hire Sarah to communicate, you know, to gather information and share it with everybody. But the reason we need that is because we need to know whether to evacuate or not. And if we have that information, then we can make good decisions so that we don't clog up our roads uh, at the last minute when everybody's trying to leave. So I, I would make that suggestion as just feedback from my experience. Um, so take it for what it's worth and, and hopefully in the next emergency, we'll be better informed. Thanks much. Mary Carmen's next, and then Ellen, and then Ryan. Okay. Can you hear me? Me pueden escuchar? Okay, um, 
I just wanted to um, just follow up on what Avram said um, in regards to Nixel. I did um, go into the Nixel actual website and notice that a lot of the Nixels were coming from the Santa Rosa City or the, the Santa, Santa Rosa Fire Department. So for these, um, in order for me to be able to sleep this weekend, I actually added um, the Santa Rosa City uh, Nixel on my phone. Um, just because, as you mentioned, there were, you know, we were getting a lot of Napa Nixels uh, in the previous, uh, or in the glass fire. Um, and it came so close, but we were, you know, nobody was really knowing what was happening. So I do, um, I second Avram's um, recommendation that the um, the sheriff do just a tad more, you know, um, alerts. Um, I also noticed, I, I followed, somebody had talked to me about Sarah Stritch also, and I was following her. Um, what I did notice was that people were seeking maps. There were maps that were being shared, which were very helpful. I think that is a critical component. Uh, I believe it was the Sonoma County map that uh, I was able to open up and really uh, have a closer look at where that fire was, but I didn't get the sense that it was being updated often. Either that or it was really a static fire, I don't know. But um, you know, when it was so close to us, uh, kind of generally around Glen Ellen, yes, it was very concerning. And so people were looking for a level of uh, specificity, you know, that uh, uh, particularly with maps. So, you know, that, that's a good area to improve. Yeah, I, I agree with Avram, Marikam, and, and Ellen. Uh, I was, I also get Napa Nixels and the amount of information that was coming from Napa was, was uh, far surpassed Sonoma. Um, and like Ellen said, uh, it was the maps that I really relied on and I would check them, if not hourly, um, even more so to see where the line was approaching. And it, I, I found it um, fascinating that a fire was getting so close without more information being shared with such a large population south of that evacuation line. Um, I, I, it was almost like, well, you know, we've done this before, you know what I mean? It's like, that's kind of where my brain went. Um, so I, I would love to see a little bit more communication, especially when it's it, any, in any situation, but especially when it's approaching um, such a heavily populated community with uh, one main road out because there's bridges that are being rebuilt, um, you know, to get to the other main artery out. So uh, I, I would love to see a little bit more um, involvement in that in that regard. Maite, thank you. Um, yeah, I uh, you know everybody has has covered it pretty well. Um, I do agree. I think there's this just this level of wanting to be informed that people it gives you a sense of, of uh, a little bit of security if you know what's going on. And um, so what, during the middle of the glass fire, there was a small fire that started in uh, Maxwell Park. I live, a, you know, a stone's throw away from Maxwell Park. Nothing came out around that. And it would have been nice to know that, particularly because everybody's heightened concern um, we're all kind of on pins and needles during this time. And there's just kind of a level of respect to your community to be able to keep them informed. So I would strongly urge that the sheriff examine um, his Nixel protocols and maybe work on informing people a little bit more. Ryan? Yeah, I, I agree with Chair Ituri. Um, that fire that was in Maxwell, I only knew about it because I also follow Pulse Point. I don't know if anyone else does on here. And so it gave me the notification. I've gotten like three, I've, I've received two in the past 27 minutes. Um, so that's the only reason why I knew what was going on. And I actually had friends text me like, hey, do you smell smoke? And we were upwind of it, so we didn't, but I pulled out the app and I was like, okay, it looks like it's a fire in Maxwell Village and blah, blah, blah. So, so I, I recommend Pulse Point to people because you will know what's going on. 
Um, but yeah, so just to echo your point, territory. Iris, and then back to Abram. Sorry. Um, two things. Um, it seems as though, once again, uh, the county doesn't exactly understand the geography of the valley as well as it would be as would benefit us. And so, uh, you know, maybe they or, and the, that there's a large population down here and, and that we do need to be notified. Another thing that um, concerned me at the time was um, a friend of mine who's um, she's 78. She has limited resources and she also is somewhat disabled. Um, actually dialed 911 or excuse me 211 um, to get information on the fire because she was quite concerned that she should be thinking about evacuating and she wanted to do it sooner or later when the glass fires were happening and I'll, she lives in Sonoma and the 211 operator could look for her address in Santa Rosa <sighs> And it, she had said she lived in Sonoma. She repeated she lived in Sonoma. And finally she said, um, no, it looks like everything's fine, which wasn't really reassuring. Um, she called me for a different reason. And I, I reassured her that um, we, you know, everything did seem fine that, um, but, but a further explanation of why everything seemed fine would have helped her out a lot. Um, it just seemed as though uh, the response of the operator and not even knowing, having a clue about where she lived was not helpful at all, didn't give her any confidence. And then to, uh, to say, well, you know, we're, we're not getting any reports of, of this fire spreading down there, it would have been helpful to add a little detail that would help her out. And that's, that's my comment. Thank you. Ram, did you have a comment? I think you had your hand up. Yeah, yeah. Just, just real quickly, um, the the Maxwell fire. I, I did find out about it on Twitter. I mean, that was really a actually my best source of information, uh, or at least timely information. Um, and so may maybe Supervisor Gordon can comment on that um, in in terms of you know how we move forward with that. I'd like to, to follow up my comments. Um, I thought the, the maps, the GIS was an improvement over before. I like that, that we have the satellite data that shows us um, where the hot spots are. I think that they can even get more satellite data in there because I've found it on other, um, on other applications, but I thought that was really helpful to see where the hot spots are and then um, It'd be great if they could overlay wind on top of that. That would be ideal. And then we'd know where it was coming. Um, anyway, um, as far as uh, uh, the stuff with uh, Napa County, Susan, yeah, that that really I, I know we've all we, we've all had this conversation, and we're in a unique place because that's where our threats often come from. And um, you know, if, if they could, if they if if our sheriffs could could seem to communicate together, that would be ideal. That's all I have. I, I think this is a really good conversation uh, to have and thank you for talking about it. Um, I've done my own sort of analysis of even the power shutdowns. When did you receive information? And certainly the fire, did you receive a Nixle alert during that time? I'm, my conversations are with the sheriff may be getting blurred. I think uh, we had this conversation at the community leaders a Zoom meeting uh, one week where we had Misty Wood uh, and coming on to the community leader Zoom to talk about how Nixle operates, why Sonoma County is different than Napa County that seems to report every blade of grass blowing or every dog barking. And, uh, and so a lot of people get turned off by the Napa Nixels because they are talking about random things. Um, I, so I would encourage you to invite uh, Misty Wood from the Sheriff's Office or the Sheriff to have this conversation regarding Nixel. I think it's a good conversation to have, but um, 
were any of you close to a fire? I think the point you have to remember is all things being equal, you will receive an ICSA alert if it's time to evacuate and you will receive it well in advance of any danger to you in your neighborhoods. Uh, we now have a new uh, philosophy regarding evacuations. Um, because of what the campfire experience, because of what we experienced in 2017, uh, and you look at how Kincaid Fire and Wallbridge Fire evacuated uh, really fast, really early, and they evacuated in the Wallbridge Fire, well, in the Kincaid Fire, all of Healdsburg, all of Windsor, they wanted you to get the heck out so the firefighters could actually hold the line and fight the fires. The same pretty much with the Wallbridge Fire. They started the north end and evacuated people south so that you did not have gridlock on the roads for the most part. There were, there were, there were some traffic congestion around the Forestville area, narrow roads, but if a fire was coming, uh, they will evacuate us early. Now, when the now that being said, that fire, the glass fire, came really fast over the hill, strong winds, pretty similar to the Tubbs fire. It took about 40 minutes to 50 minutes. Uh, by the time the fire was at the Sonoma County line until it ran down to Highway 12. That's cutting it really close. And uh, talked with Cal Fire, who actually had to convince Cal Fire over in Napa, they better get over there because they saw the fire, the ember fire at the top of the hill, the top of St. Helena Road. And they said, and they knew which way the prevailing winds were coming. And they said, this is going to be serious. And so they moved all of the forces down to the St. Francis Shopping Center and started evacuations immediately door to door in Los Alamos Road. So the good news is we lost no one in a very, very rapid fire. And I know even in Oakmont, it took us a little bit of time to evacuate from Oakmont, but those first responders went door to door at every house in Oakmont, Oakmont to make sure that people had evacuated. And so you can't knock the first responders for the efforts that they did. Now, I will say we had a little confusion with a SOCO alerts. Yes, we know that that's a problem. There's SOCO alerts and there's NIXA alerts. And we had a problem with SOCO alerts, absolutely. We also had a problem with the city interface with Oakmont on one side and the county interface on north of Highway 12. Uh, Joe is now volunteering to be part of the COPE group in Oakmont. And he kept saying, no, no, it's not time. We're not, we're not receiving the warnings to evacuate. Well, the Northern part of Highway 12 did. Uh, they were in the county. And so the Southern part in Santa Rosa, um, we, we needed better coordination between the city and the county. But again, when the first responders and the firefighters were there, when the fire came down the hill uh, into Los Alamos Road and they knew the flames were coming down, they stopped the traffic right there and rooted them to the south. They did not want any more traffic to go to the north. So they were on it. They had total control of all of the intersections. They waved us through. And we did have a little bit of Grinlock through Kenwood, but other than that, phew, it was fast going down into the valley and then eventually into Nevada where we booked a hotel room. I said, I don't care what you're doing, get me a hotel room. So, <laughs> so Joe did get, did get me a hotel room. There's a lot to talk about in the PSPS and the emergency alert systems. And I would encourage us to invite Christopher Godley and the sheriff on to one of the MAC meetings to talk about what happened, how they responded and actually invite um, Cal Fire on there as well. You may not know, but I was um, escorted by Shauna Jones. She is the unit chief from Cal Fire. She's in charge of six counties. All those men work under her at her direction. She's amazing. She's the superstar. 
calm, cool, collected. And there are many, many great people working to protect us. And we can feel really proud that uh, they were all in a unified command. They knew what they were doing. We had no fatalities. We were evacuated when we needed to evacuate. And we can talk about the challenges with Nixon because we know about it. The, the sheriff has a different philosophy than the Napa County does. And I'm not sure that we're going to be able to get some cohesion and coordination on that different. It's not actually the sheriff in Napa County that um, sends out the Nixle. It's another body. And so you are caught in the crossfire of the Napa Nixles and the Sonoma County Nixles. But trust me, if that fire was coming to you, the Sonoma County Sheriff would get you out of there and make sure that everybody had evacuated in time. And I feel pretty safe about that and comfortable about that. But you're right, Nixle, Soco Alert, we have a lot more work to do. So good conversation. Invite uh, the folks down here to have that conversation. Thank you. Um, are there any other comments or questions at this point? Abram. Uh, yeah, thank, thank you so much, uh, Supervisor Gorn. I, I appreciate that. I don't think any of us are certainly knocking the first responders. We're just blessed to have the people that are doing the kind of job they've done. I admire them greatly. I think it's just uh, when you say a lot of people are bothered by too many, um, you know, alerts. I, I think just listening to the folks on <laughs> commenting now, it doesn't seem like anybody was um, objecting to too many alerts from Napa. You know, if the sheriff has that attitude, or maybe we switch who's in charge of Nixle, but um, the people get a choice. I'd like to hear Nixle anywhere in Sonoma County. And if I get 18,000 alerts, I'll filter to, through the 18,000 alerts. I think people given a choice would appreciate that. I, I do like to be informed. And I think from what I hear of my uh, fellow uh, MAC members, they do too. So that's just a suggestion. Maybe that would kind of solve that. Uh, everybody could get what they want. If people only want to be alerted when they need to evacuate, great. For the rest of us, it would be great to be better informed. Uh, and, and I appreciate that. It was really frustrating for so many people during the Wallbridge Myers fire because Sonoma Valley did not get any of the next alerts. Uh, they were really focused on the folks and the areas that needed to get them to evacuate and, and to be issued a warning. But you can go on to Nixle and in, uh, insert a number of other uh, zip codes. So it's not just your zip code at home. You could specify Oakmont's um, zip code, or Rinka Valley zip code, or other zip codes. So you actually could be informed more broadly if you choose to do that. So you might go back onto Nixle and register a few more zip codes so that you will receive uh, more information about what is happening at the county. That would be great. And and if you could suggest, and I don't know if they have a thing, all of Sonoma County, I just press that one and that would take care of it for me rather than searching. And, uh, I, and I don't know that, but you, you could go on and then figure out what they have. Thank you. Hi. Um, Ray. Ray wasn't looking, sorry. Um, sorry. It's okay. Uh, I, I think that one thing that the sheriff does not really understand is the degree of trauma that people experienced uh, uh, starting in 2017. And, and uh, we kind of, we, you know, a lot of people kind of revisit that when, when these things happen. Um, I could say that I do. Uh, and, and that people don't understand the improvements. I think there hasn't been enough publicity about the improvements in the um, evacuation planning that has happened. Uh, 
which would reassure, hopefully reassure people. Um, and it's it's the price that uh, that I, I think that in a sense the sheriff is paying um, on in terms of the Nixle alerts um, that we really do need more. Uh, we need more hand holding right now because our confidence has been severely shaken. Thank you. Ellen. You know, I think another issue actually uh, that people are concerned about in evacuation, Susan, you're saying that we would have plenty of time or plenty of notice. Um, I don't know what plenty of time means. I don't know if it is sufficient for people to get off of mountain, you know, or the big hills here uh, with the, all the narrow roads. I know that, it, that um, in the glass fire, I actually did evacuate uh, because I can go someplace that south has easy evacuation. So, you know, for me, it, it was a matter of kind of if I have an option, well, I'll take that option. A lot of people don't have that option. And I don't know if they give you a half an hour notice or if they give you, you know, 15 minutes notice, whether that's plenty of notice, but I'm not, I'm not convinced that it's sufficient for one artery or maybe one and a half because you're going to take either Highway 12 or you're going to take Arnold and you've got to take very few roads off of these hills. So, I think that's another issue for people that I agree with Iris that people are very nervous. And, and we have a right to be nervous. Absolutely. We went through significant trauma. I know that best of all. Uh, and so I, I get what you're saying clearly. Um, don't discount the fact that the glass fire devastated areas with a very, very narrow roads. Uh, St. Helena Road, Tarwater Road, um, um, Los Alamos Road, Cougar, Cougar Lane, all of the long driveways are very narrow, and yet we had no fatalities. And the authorities made sure that everybody got out lickety split. So, it, the, the, but the scale of the 2017 fires were, was not the scale of the glass fire, was not the scale of the Kincaid fire and the Wallbridge fire. All of those areas had very narrow roads, but they didn't have nine fires all starting at the same time that totally devastated Sonoma Valley and, and certainly the tubs come roaring through. So indeed, we do have a, um, a, a right to feel trauma and they're going to get you the warning as rapidly as they can get it out, but they want to avoid some of the gridlock that happened in 2017. And so I think that that and um, get people out quickly enough so that the firefighters can get in there and not have to jostle with the cars coming down a very narrow road. I think that there have been great improvements made with um, what the county has done as far as evacuating people. They have sections and I think that there's all kinds of, we learned a lot in 2017 and it's evident in what's happened over the last couple of years that a lot of learning happened and it's been um, put into practice. But I do um, agree with Iris and Ellen and what people have been saying is that we in Sonoma Valley are very skittish because of the limited roads out of here and um, and bridges being worked on. And uh, if trees, so during this last windstorm, a tree went down in the road down the street, right? So a tree goes down and now your only road out of here is blocked, right? So I said to my, I said to my family that I think we need to buy a chainsaw. So though those kinds of things are very because we have so few ways out of here and i think and um i would be happy to invite the sheriff um to this conversation i will pr be perfectly honest i'm not sure how open he is to hearing what we have to say um but it would be great to have him come and perhaps listen to what the concerns are in the valley and I would have Chris Godley come at the same time so that the emergency operations center folks and the sheriff can both hear what you have to say. And they will, uh, 
I've um, been through ear many a time talking about exactly this. So yeah, have at it. <laughs> <laughs> we will, Susan. <laughs> this is a motley crew. We absolutely will. <laughs> okay. Are there any? Um, are there any other comment, Ray? Are there any other hands from no the council? Other hands. Okay. No we, okay, thank you. Should we open up to public comment if anyone wants to comment on what they've heard or add to the conversation? Sure. Um, at this time, for those members of the public who wish to make a comment, please use the raise hand feature and we will allow you to speak. Para los miembros de la comunidad que deseen hacer un comentario, por favor, utilicen la aplicación de levantar mano y se les uh, autorizará a eh, hacer su comentario. Giving it just another second. I don't see any raised hands. Okay. All right. So um, for future, when we get to the future um, agenda items, we can add... Um, what Supervisor Gorin is suggesting. Uh, so we talked about taking a quick break here at this point. So it's 7.33. If we come back at 7.40, no, seven, yeah, that would be, yeah, 7.40, seven minutes. Um, we'll take a seven minute break and then we'll reconvene. Thank you all for being here. We are back. Thank you. Well, we have to mix the Okay. Enjoy. I have to, okay, I have to get this thing fixed. Very not not working. Okay. Are they back? Jordy's back. We're still waiting for Abram. Okay. I'm here. All right. Okay. Uh, well, we'll get started. We're going to go to the ad hoc updates and a possible reorganization of um, of the ad hocs because there, uh, we may want to uh, introduce the idea of talking about the plaza again and what that might mean because it, there's definitely an interest in that amongst the community and some of the MAC members. So um, I think we'll do the updates first, then I'll talk a little bit about the possible reorganization. So um, Ellen, Avram, or John, do you want to give an update on where you are with the survey? And then we'll do emergency preparedness. OK, sure. Um, well, with the survey, um, we're still waiting for just that quick conversation with somebody at the county. Uh, just on liability for the MAC, um, as we were advised, and also about liability around um, HIPAA and um, people revealing um, medical issues. Although we don't ask about that specifically in the survey, we're not asking for particulars. If you recall, the survey is simply asking, do you have needs? So. Mm -hmm. Um, it, I think it would be um, um, a very quick conversation and Karina said that she would, she would set that up. I just wanna say that the goal of the survey, I just wanna kind of recap very quickly here because it's been a little while. It was to get uh, the state of need um, uh, due to the pandemic and the state of emergency preparedness in the community. So those are our two overarching goals. But it was also made very clear to me uh, by Susan's um, um, consultant that she, that she recommended we, that we talk to, that this is a survey, that it's not canvassing the community. It is not going to be fully uh, representative of everybody. That would cost 50 to 100,000. So it is simply a survey getting a sense of where the needs are and what the state of uh, preparedness is. Um, it's already been translated in Spanish, and um, you know it would be more more than likely just a digital only um, outreach. But we could definitely uh, leave copies at retail. 
areas of concern, I've, I just uh, mentioned that to you, uh, HIPAA and liability. Um, the, and the fact that obviously it's, it's not going to be fully represented. We don't have the means to make sure that, you know, we have um, the Hispanic community uh, participation, but that obviously would be the goal. Um, on the second component of that, um, I presented last month a little presentation of our possibly using Nextdoor as a platform to assist us in communicating and getting information back. Um, I did get a hold of the global public agency lead at Nextdoor. We're going to have a conversation on Thursday. Um, John, John and Avram are invited to join me in that conversation. The conversation may um, continue. But I outlined, I sent them actually the presentation that I, that I showed all of you. And the goal here using Nextdoor would be to have a platform over and above. It's a mapping platform similar to their trick or treat map and similar to their Christmas mm -hmm. cheers map where people would be able to put information in and receive information, including our advice, our uh, locations of uh, where uh, people would be able to evacuate to. So it's kind of a two-way street. Um, and I did want to share because someone at last month's meeting, someone from the public, um, I think it was Anna uh, Pierce who had said next door might not be a suitable medium. Well, I do have some proprietary information about Nextdoor's usage. This is a multicultural uh, research study that was done. It, it, it is across the Bay Area, so it's not spring specific. Um, so it may be a little different. But when asked about usage, um, and this was among news viewers, this is among people who look for information. But when asked about um, readership, um, the mention of next door was 20% for Hispanics. It was 38% for uh, non-Hispanic Blacks, 29% for non-Hispanic Asians, and 59% for non-Hispanic Whites. So it, there's a high incidence in the Bay Area of using next door. And then there was another question asked, and by the way, um, this, uh, this other question is a top two box score, meaning, you know, very much my go-to or one of my favorites. Um, so th anyway, the, the uh, information that I just gave you was answering, is this a go-to or a favorite? So um, it's, it's, it's uh, underdeveloped in, among Hispanics, but um, overall, I think it's a very sound platform. Um, and also mm -hmm. asked about, is it one of the most used apps? That was 18% Hispanics, 20% uh, for non-Hispanic Blacks, 18% for non-Hispanic Asians, and 26 for non-Hispanic Whites. So it is used. Uh, something else that came up in the survey, um, much lower in performance was Citizen App. So that's something else we might consider. Um, but anyway, I am going to have a conversation with them on Thursday about their receptivity and their ability to let us form our own geographies to have a what's called a shape file, which is we would have to work with the county to get a, a GIS file on that, a GIS file. But it would be very efficient for us. And the other question that I asked them is, could we get a separate map for the Spanish speaking uh, community that are already on Nextdoor? So I'm not a big Nextdoor user, but I certainly see it enough to see that, yes, you know, there are Spanish speakers on there. Um, and if they could give us kind of a subset map where we would be able to communicate, uh, or if it's just one map, we can have it um, in both. English and Spanish, why not? So 
I'm hopeful that they say, yes, let's work together. We would do the legwork and we would try to get uh, create awareness and that people could go to this map to get information about emergency preparedness. And I hope that people would also, that the platform could serve as a way that people would put their own plan on there and it would be private but it would be shared with family members who would have a pin. And if it came to an emergency and people had access, because that's always an issue, if you have access, they would be able to go onto that site and get a reminder. Oh yes, this is the evacuation plan for my family. Um, I spent a little bit of time looking at uh, the Map Your Neighborhood, which I thought was fascinating. I thought that was really extraordinary. And I see these two uh, working very separately, but, but both potentially being important um, uh, efforts to uh, have people be ready. So anyway, the, the long and short of it here is, you know, if we want to still have a survey, which is just getting information, and we are, I don't know if we can use the county uh, survey monkey. Frankly, I don't even know if the survey that I put together is still available because so much time has gone by. I may have to create it again. So I would just as soon create it on the, on the county uh, uh, survey monkey than ours. But if we want to approve today, I'm fine with going ahead, recreating that and uh, linking it onto websites. John and Avram can talk about, you know, more about, you know, how we would disseminate this but um, we don't have the, the money for uh, having it professionally done, which uh, I was told would be a quote of about $5,000. We certainly don't have enough money to canvas everybody. So um, I did wanna mention that I also noticed uh, PG&E does have a uh, medical baseline program. I'm gonna reach out to them, I would doubt very much if they would share any of that information with us just for the same reason, um, you know, that we may have some potential liabilities by asking about need and if we don't meet it, what does that mean? But anyway, I am gonna reach out to PG&E just to ask if, uh, if it's possible that we could have uh, some sense of what the needs are, um, because if they're gathering that data for our community, you know, then maybe they would be uh, prepared and willing to share it with us. Thank you. Is there, does anyone else from the ad hoc committee, your ad hoc committee have anything they want to add? Oh, John, Hello? go ahead. Go ahead. I've been talking. Go ahead, John. Well, first of all, Alan, thank you for that uh, great recap. That was awesome. Um, if we did decide to go on the survey side, if we did decide to go on the survey side, um, uh, we still want to do that without getting some kind of clarity from legal counsel, right? Or are you thinking of just? I'd like. You know, it's such a brief conversation. I, I I don't know why the county would object to giving us an opportunity to just ask the question of any kind of liability that when you go out asking people, we are asking them to share their name and neighborhood and their contact. And as I said, we're not asking them to be specific about their needs, but it's such an easy question. I, I, it's a phone yeah. call. And I, I'm really asking and encouraging the county uh, answer that question for us. I mean, we are, you know, we're doing a service here for our community. It's very little that we're asking for the county to assure us of, of that, you know, that this questionnaire is uh, not, um, you know, not an issue for any of us. Right. Yeah, I would like to get obviously that answered, and I think it, then we just revisit our questions and make sure they're still, you know, the appropriate based on you know today's. It's been a while since we put that together, um, but I, well, I'd I like to try to get that out and disseminate. I, d I did go through it today and I can share my screen if you wanted to go through it now. I don't know if that's the most efficient use of our time. I think it is still really very Probably relevant. Not. 
you know, I didn't, I didn't get the sense that none of it mattered anymore. It's over and done with it. I mean, it, all of it is going to continue to matter. Emergency preparedness, particularly, um, but this pandemic's not over either. Yeah. yeah. But I'm, I'm glad to share it. I, I have a question. I wasn't sure if Avram had something to add, but I have a question as well. But Avram? I want to give Avram an hour. You had your hand up. Yeah. yeah. Th th thank you. Um, a, a couple of things. Uh, one is um, it, it's probably more relevant now than even before. Uh, meaning that we've now been in COVID for a while. And I think, you know, people have had the opportunity to have to deal with it for, for quite some time. So I think we're going to get some good responses. And certainly after the glass fire, it couldn't be more appropriate either. So I, I think in terms of uh, you know, value, in terms of getting responses, I think it's, it's really relevant. Uh, secondly, um, I know we've been trying to get the county to work with their uh, survey monkey. You know, to be honest, Ellen, I think, you know, we've tried and tried, and I think Karina has tried to help us, and I, the county is just involved in too many other things, and we're not going to get that. So in light of that, um, I, I don't know if we've approved as a council to spend the money. I don't know if it was 300 or 600 or what that figure was. I can't remember, Ellen. Uh, you it was 400. 400, yeah. that, that that be approved. And I'd make a motion to that because we've just, we've been talking about it too long. As far as distribution, if we can get uh, next door on board, I, I, I think we could get some, uh, you know, uh, some good feedback. It won't be comprehensive, but at least we, we can reach out. That's probably the best source of reaching out to the community. Um, and, and certainly we would go to the, as we said before, the Sonoma Theological Association, the IT, KSVY, and broadcast that to the community uh, at a site where, where they could get on and take the survey. So I think it's time. I think we need to start moving ahead. I would hope legal counsel could give the five minutes to, to give its blessing so we, we know we're, we're uh, doing the right thing and not exposing the county or uh, the, the council to any legal liability. So those are my comments, thanks. Oh, and, and can I just say that um, in, in response to what you just said, um, we don't need uh, Nextdoor to work with us to actually put it on, uh, you know, on Nextdoor. I mean, we can uh, put a link up there anyway. Uh, this working with them, uh, you know, the, the approach that I'm taking with them is actually a mapping overlay which would be populated with information. It would be populated with um, help. If people need help, they already have this feature in there. If people need help, they can actually state what they need and people who are prepared to give help can state what they're prepared to give. I just want it to function uh, more um, efficiently and for, to function around emergency preparedness. And so that's part of what I was going to be talking to them about. And the last thing I want to say is the other thing I would talk to them about, Nextdoor does have a polling feature over and above just a random organization putting a survey up there, which you know is what I would do. But um, they actually would have a polling uh, capability. Um, that $400 is um, only one person could access the data. I was hoping we would spend a thousand and have three people accessing the data, but for us, that's a lot of money. So, you know, if we want to spend the 400 for it and I would be the only one who would be able to see the data, pull it out and, and provide it to you. I mean, that's fine. So I just have a couple, I, I'm sorry, I can't see you. Did somebody else have something to say? Yeah, no, I was just going to uh, finish up in response uh, to Ellen's comment about Nextdoor and um, the whole GIS thing. If we do a GIS, then couldn't we send out from that to that whole GIS area with our survey? Oh, yes. That's what I was, that's what I was commenting yeah, on. Yeah, I guess you're right. Okay. But, but um, to get that GIS, that shape file to give to them? Uh, we, we need the county's help on that. And I know that the other ad hoc com committee is also looking for that 
um, that file too. We haven't had any luck with uh, with our requests for um, help. And I sent in two, and I got a reminder, and then just nothing. I think GIS. I don't know. We're we're very low on the priority, but I did find out that Permit Sonoma is where we're supposed to go, and I do have the contact, but non-responsive. I'll make a note to try again. I kind of wonder: is this something that the city of Sonoma would help help us with? I know they, it's not their GIS, but they have, um, I don't know that they have the same data that the county has. They've got a they've got their own GIS system. I've used it, and it. Um, come, you have to actually use um, a different browser. You can't just use uh, yeah, Chrome on it. It, it likes um, Explorer or something. Yeah, but, um, it too. yeah it's got a, it's got a, um, they might, I, I don't know what data, they won't, they won't have the same data sets that the county got has. Got it. Okay, so I have a couple. Mary Carmen. Go ahead. Sorry. I can't, sorry, can't see oh, no, you. I'm sorry, Mary Carmen, then Maite, you're next. Okay. Uh, yes, can you hear me? Yes. So mm -hmm. I, I actually just sent Karina um, a research that was done after the 2017 fires that is called Desconectados, how Latinos obtained, um, how emergency information got lost in translation during the wildfires. Um, if she, Karina, if you can share it, it's on page 10. You can actually see um, the list of different kinds of outreach and which ones were more the most popular or how people actually, um, what was their main source of information. Um, I, I invite everybody to see it, but Nixel is a little bit less than half in the lower part as less popular, um, but you you can see there which ones are were the most um, popular. Well, I, I think know, that Karina, um, if you can open it and share it really quick. Mary Carmen, I think a, a goal would also be to uh, get this even in the hard copy form to. Um, uh, you know, local retailers and also to La Luz. And if they didn't want to mail it back or, uh, you know, somehow get it to, back to us, they could leave it there and we would go pick it up. And I do, I do agree with taking information there, but I don't think of doing such a big investment in Nixo when we already have social media that people are accessing, like Instagram is really popular, Facebook, and with the digital divide that is already happening, people and parents are already stressed out. That And that would be putting more of a burden of organizations that are already really um, tired, I would say, or that don't have the time to be supporting that. So we can't put the burden on, on organizations to try to do the most that we can on social media. That is, I would say, at no cost to us. Um, so that would be my suggestion, though I, I think that Nixo is really good for the majority of the population, but I think um, it would be probably more efficient, more cost efficient to just use the regular social media that people are already accessing and doing the survey monkey from the county, which they already offered. Um, so that's just my opinion. So um, I have a, a couple of comments and a couple of wonderings. Um, there are no cost ways to get information and Mari Karman just mentioned many of them. You can use Google Form for nothing and we could send that out through Facebook pages where our Springs Mac Facebook page is getting more and more followers. And certainly not that everyone that lives in the Springs, but it's increasing. And maybe there's some opportunities, like I know that I know that the ad hoc is concerned about the liability piece. Maybe those are some of the questions that could be maybe exited from the interview from the survey now, and we just bring it down to like what are the really important things you want to know out of this survey? And that the map your neighborhood group could pick up those pieces that the survey has to for lack of a better word, abandoned because of liability issues. So I'm just trying to find some different ways to help 
move this and Google Forms will give you beautiful graphs and turn it into a spreadsheet and several people can have access to it. So I was just, and if it went out on social media, we would get a pretty good response, I believe. Anyway, that's just a couple of my wonderings about if those might be possibilities to help move it along a little bit. So uh, I want to make sure I'm understanding what you're saying. You're saying that instead of using SurveyMonkey at 400 bucks, maybe we would just create a spreadsheet type thing. And a Google Forms will turn it into a spreadsheet. It's a survey. It's an absolute survey. It's called Google Forms. And okay. you have multiple choice, short answer, long answer, all kinds of options, check boxes. And then it turns it into a spreadsheet. Now, it's kind of unwieldy, but you can still get graphs and things out of it, too. Hmm. So are you saying, I use, should I look I'm into saying, that? It's, it's really easy. I, be, I mean, I, it's, not, it's not super hard. You would have to pick. I mean, I, I hear your concerns about the legal aspect of this and the liability. So you might have to, like I said, exit some of those questions that you're feeling are like, eh, not sure about this. But some of those other questions are rich and could give us some information that we could get in a much quicker way if we go with something. Okay. I don't know. It's just a, just as I'm sitting here listening to the conversation, it might be a quicker, cheaper way to get it done. I'll look into it. I'm happy to help because I, I, I love spreadsheets. So. <laughs> yeah, they're my life too. Yeah. Like them so, anyway, I'm willing to help if you want. If you want, we could talk offline about it. Okay. Um, okay, I'm gonna give, go ahead. I'm sorry. The Excel <laughs> ad hoc. Uh huh. Oh, that'd be a fun one. And then you have lots of tabs. Anyway, I, I'll stop. Um, okay, I'm gonna talk a little bit about uh, the emergency preparedness ad hoc. We have some um, exciting news to share. Um, a couple of things have happened. We've been able to move a few things. Um, and uh, I, I'll just share them and then let the ad hoc add on anything from their perspective. Um, so the we have been um, working really hard to get places in the Springs area identified and surveyed as shelters. And um, thanks to the Red Cross and Sonoma County and Supervisor Gorin's persistence and Karina's persistence, it's going to happen on November 6th. So they're going to come and survey um, several of several locations in the Springs area and make sure that they are that they have the most accurate information about what those locations can accommodate. Um, so they'll be looking at Hannah, Flowery, Altamira, El Verano and the Boys and Girls Club. So we're very excited about that happening. So thank you to everybody that's pushed that along. Um, we also will have a fiscal sponsor for our GoFundMe account for the trailer. Um, it's still in the works and the board that's going to do the fiscal sponsoring has not approved it yet, but they are in process. And that GoFundMe account would help purchase a trailer, a movable trailer, and perhaps uh, what Ray refers to as a Connex trailer, one that's stationary to, ha to hold on to um, the supplies we might need. And um, the GoFundMe account would go out through social media to try to help to fund these efforts. The Red Cross would be contributing uh, blankets and cots and other items to the trailer. Um, the final thing is um, we have received a uh, $10,000 grant from the Catalyst Group to help fund a person at 250 about 250 hours to help us do the outreach in the community and this could be a place where the survey the and the questions that the survey is not able to answer in an online setting could be could help to get answered through this um this work so it would be a map your neighborhood person to help iris and muddy Carmen do some more outreach by a bilingual person um, knows the springs and help us organize um, so we're very grateful to um, everyone who has helped move all of these things forward. Um, and Ray and Iris, is there anything you want to add to this conversation? 
Um, I think we can talk about that more when we get into the ad hoc reorganization. I think that we would like to talk more about how, how we move forward the fire safe council and, and bring other people. Um, if there's other people that are in, interested in that, we'll, we'll need a lot of different expertise with that to, 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 that's a whole another ball of wax that we need to get moving forward. So, um, I think we can talk about that in, in our reorganization conversation and how we form up to, to meet that goal and our other goals. Um, for myself, is, am I okay now? Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, on, there's going to be a um, map your neighborhood uh, uh, Zoom class tomorrow night at 6 p.m. Uh, to 7.15 uh, given by the Sebastopol, um, um, oh dear. Hmm. Uh, I, now I'm not remembering the, the, the name of the, uh, the group. It's about um, uh, community safety in, in uh, you know, it, for Sebastopol. But Skip Jarrell is the uh, person who heads it up. And uh, he, he gives a great class. And I would encourage you, I, I can just blanket send you all the link. Um, or, or if you want to indicate that you'd be, in, I'll just send it all to you. <laughs> I'll send you the link for tomorrow and you can sign up. Um, it's, it's a great program. It's person to person. Basically you do have a, a neighborhood leaders, um, but basically the job of the neighborhood leaders is to facilitate communication between the neighbors so that they, we all talk about what we need. Um, we talk about what our skills are and what resources we have. You know, even things like ladders and <laughs> ladders and hoses and wrenches and things like that. You know, um, a chainsaw would be good. <laughs> we could use a chainsaw. Um, <laughs> uh, and I um, am going to give a plug to all of you um, to consider. I think we're we're not, it, not 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 many of you are going to be in the position to step forward to be. Um, uh, block leaders for your um, for your neighborhood, but I assume you probably know people in the community that um, we could um, talk to about doing that, and that's what we really need because we are going to need a lot of people to be community leaders in it in order to cover the entire Springs area, which I know. That's probably not going to happen, but I'd like my goal is to get as many people on board with this as possible so that we're all talking about emergency preparedness. Um, and one of this, I had a long conversation with Skip last, last evening. Um, uh, the point he made with me is that it is very important to practice these things. Um, and, and that's part of the reason you get together with your neighbors, because in an emergency, we tend to kind of freak out. <laughs> and um, go to our default settings, maybe of panic. Uh, and, and so we need to practice so that it, it's, some, it's rote. It's like getting your go bag together ahead of time and knowing where it is. Um, you know, so that's my plug. Um, I'll, I'll um, send out the link to all of you and, um, and, and, and my plea to uh, uh, hit up your friends and neighbors to um, be block leaders. So, and Mari Carmen wants, has something to say here too. Thanks. Uh, yes, um, I just wanted to um, just follow on uh, what um, I was speaking to. I, I took the uh, Map Your Neighborhood class as well, I think in the, in the past month. Uh, one thing that they do not unfortunately have is a connection with the Latino community in Sebastopol area or they don't have it in Spanish. Um, I did talk to Alma Bowen, who's from Nostra Comunidad, who I guess um, at one point has uh, worked with Skip um, to do a uh, map your neighborhood in Spanish. Um, I don't know exactly how that looked like or how that worked. Um, I didn't see anyone that spoke Spanish in the, um, in the council leader. Um, and, and I know that Skip actually did mention that he wanted to know more after we did it at how they, that he can connect or, you know, with the Latino community more. So I just wanted to uh, mention that the Alma is open 
Um, she's also CERT trained and she does CPR as well. So she's very willing to support us in any way as well. Thank you. Um, before we go into reorganization, I'll um, leave, I'll open this for public comment and then we'll come back to talk about some different options for the ad hoc committees. My I actually had one question. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. I'm sorry. Ray's not paying attention there. Right. <laughs> uh, no, sorry. Iris, uh, you know, I went through all their material. I thought it was really a fascinating program. I went through it all today. And um, I was kind of curious, though, if we actually were able to fully implement this in the Springs, that would be about 200 to 300 uh, neighborhood groups, uh, map by neighborhood groups. So I was just curious about what is, is there an overarching leader to that whole group? Are we the overarching leader to two or 300 different groups? Okay, there's um, above the block leader, there are um, group leaders. Uh, and actually Ray is the person to, to um, talk to about this because he's working on fire safe council. It, it's basic, basically we're, we're kind of building this uh, as we go. It's not, not the way you're supposed to build a house, but as Ray will attest, but uh, it, it seems like it's a very, uh, it's an organic way of, of doing it. And uh, the most important component of all of this really is the neighborhood groups. Um, and then we can build on top of that um, with, uh, you know, there's CERT training, there's fire safe training. Um, there are grants, I should let Ray talk. There's, um, there are grants well, that can- yeah, I can I can fill in, Iris. I, I I think that there's there's um there's probably you know there there should be uh, Ellen. There should to answer your question. There should be a a higher you know order to that to that um, map your neighborhood organization, um, and hopefully we'll be able to you know break that down geographically. We've kind of looked at it you know east and west of the river, and then maybe north and south. You know our our zones, and if we if we you know um, coordinate that maybe with the evacuation map, we have we have some mapping to do. It would be nice to have have some some support um, from GIS, and, and I've been able to 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 piece it together just um, from their system before, but I don't necessarily have a lot of time for that. So if we could get some support, that would be great. Um, to help us kind of divide divide that up, and then we could have subdivisions and you know, divisions and subdivisions, I should say, uh, of of our of our um, geographic boundary. I think that would be helpful. Go ahead, Ellen. Well, I, I was also curious about they had some wonderful, uh, you know, simple materials. You know, the help sign and the OK sign and the, the idea of the fire extinguishers, you know, you, yeah. everybody puts their fire extinguishers outside, um, uh, the hard hats. But I was, again, curious, do they provide all that? Would we be providing all that? It's provided in the training. And I think Iris could cover that. The CERT, the CERT is a different thing. And, and we haven't, I think our main goal is to create the, the grassroots organization that that Iris and Mary Carmen so far have led the, the charge on and we'll have the additional support of, of, our, of our person that we'll be able to make available from that grant um, to keep that going and develop that. And then I think hopefully community leaders will develop out of that that will have a greater interest one over the other and, and will be interested in, in forming those roles. And I think our other, our other task is the Fire Safe Council to to provide that leadership from above and, and because so I, the fire safe council is more of a projects based kind of um, organization so it, it would look at um, a, a training would be I think an ongoing project that you would always have and you might um, I, when I was wasn't paying attention I had I was going through back in my 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 notes um, <clears throat> the other the other uh, projects it has is the community wildlife um, uh, uh, fire prevention component. Um, I got that wrong. CWPP, Community Wildlife uh, Prevention Plan. So that's a that's a whole plan to to um, that at, that looks at the neighborhood and more as, a, as the physical neighborhood and the threats for fuel reduction and how we can 
say we maybe we had a project that we wanted to go down to Maxwell, you know, we, we always know that we're going to have campfires and problems in there. Maybe we want to have a project where we want to go down for, you know, and we, we, we figure out we get enough of volunteers and it's going to cost us $2,000 for equipment or whatever. And we go down and clear out Maxwell and clear out some of the fuel in there. Projects like that or up, 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 in, you know, up in the hills where things we can identify projects that will improve our community. So that looks at it from that that level. Um, wh where the two meet and how, how they coordinate, I think is on the, definitely on the training. You know, um, the Fire Safe Council can provide um, money and support, but it sounds like there's a lot of money and support right now. Uh, and the, the fire, you know, the map your neighborhood and least dose. There's a lot of there's a lot of momentum right now for this. So, um, you know, I think I think um, that that's kind of the overall reaching the, the plan from from the, the the grassroots and the top to to try to to bring that together. But the Fire Safe Council it, it requires um, some more formality, and I think it goes into those legal questions and and and, and answers them by for, by forming a, a you know a, a corporate structure. Um, and, and pro providing liability, uh, you know, they, they talked about getting insurance for the, the officers and the members. It's it's basically like my errors and omissions insurance. You know, it would cover cover us for anything mistakes that we made. Basically, um, if we if we said this was going to reduce fuel and uh, there was a, uh, I don't know what happened. You know, maybe, maybe our chainsaw created a fire. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead, Ryan. Um, I know we have to move things forward, but I just had uh, two quick questions, uh, actually from Maite. With the Red Cross, with their donation of blankets and cots, is that based on population of the community, the units that they would donate? And then with the um, grant that we received, which is excellent information, congratulations uh, for getting that uh, across the line. Is that a person that we can choose within the community or does that go through a whole other verification process? Great questions, Ryan. Thank you so much. Um, so the Red Cross, they do, they, it sounds like it's 75 and, or 100. So it's not a lot. Um, so we would have to supplement that. And that's where like the GoFundMe account is coming into play is to help or to help to put the, fill the gaps. Um, and to your second question is, um, we're working with an organization now that would hire, would, would hire this person and they would be their employee, but we would be directing the work. So because we can't be the, we can't be the hirer, we can't be the employer. So um, we're working with another, so we have two different organizations that are supporting our work in the MAC. Thank you. One for the GoFundMe and one for the grant. Thank you. Good questions, I appreciate that. Um, so I do wanna open this up for public comment and then I, we wanna have a conversation about the reorganization of some of our ad hoc. So I just want to make it real quick. So I know that there are people still here. I want to be sure that we're honoring their time and giving them the space to speak. For those members of the public who wish to make a comment, please use the raise hand feature and you will be allowed to speak. A los miembros de la comunidad que deseen hacer un comentario, por favor, usen la aplicación eh, de levantar mano y se les autorizará eh, para que hagan su comentario. We have a comment from Diana Sanson. Please go ahead and make your comment. Can you hear us, Diana? You should see um, an option on your end to unmute. Go ahead, Diana. Try one more time. You should see a prompt on your end, Diana, asking to unmute. Can we try again? Diana? Do they have a do they have a chat option? Can she write it in the chat? Um, I can enable the chat at this moment. We apologize um, for the inconvenience, Diana. If you don't mind um, typing in your comment and I will read it out loud for you. 
I should, um, you should see the chat feature available now on your end. I will try. Our apologies. Try one more time, Diana. You should see a prompt on your end asking you to unmute. Okay, I am so sorry. I don't, we don't hear anything. I don't hear anything. She may need to enable her mic. One more time, Diana. Go ahead. Still nothing. I'm so sorry. If you don't mind, Diana, typing your um, comment in the chat and I will read it out loud. I'm so sorry and I don't see any more raised hands. Okay. Well, if Diana can get her comment in the chat, we will make sure that we make space to read it. Sorry about that. Hmm. Okay. Or, or would it be possible for her to email that to Karina and then we could, it wouldn't be really public, but at least we'd be exposed to it. And it doesn't look like there's yeah. any people in the public here to hear it. So would that work? Is that possible? Yeah, if she can, yeah. Either way. Okay. Oh, she just texted me to tell me the chat isn't working either. <laughs> ah. Oh, wait, can she text me and I can read it? Sure. Oh, Diana, did you hear that? You can text me and I can read it. Oh, her power is out. My power is out. Oh, she's going to text me. Okay, something's going on with her power. She's going to text me. I'll read it. Okay. Um, that, well, technology, it's amazing what you can do with it. Okay. Uh, so we wanted to have a little bit of a conversation. I've had conversations with a couple of, um, of uh, council members about different things and, um, and just getting feedback. And one of the things that came up during um, a conversation was about the bringing back the idea of the plaza. And that was, that's the space that's between the boys post office and the gas station. And then we also have the fire safe council and we have the emergency preparedness and we have the survey and we have communications. So there's some things that we need to put some manpower person power to, excuse me. And, um, and we wanted to talk a little bit about is the, are these of interest to folks um, to help move forward? And if they are, what, what's the level of interest? What, what do we, where do we want to put our energy? Um, and who has an interest in, in doing some of this work? So that is the entree into the conversation. Uh, yeah, well, I, I think uh, the plaza is probably an interest of, of the whole council, uh, to be honest. I know we've talked about it in the past, and it's it's been a subject for many, many, many years here in the Springs. And uh, the whole purpose of the plaza is to give the Springs an identity, to have a place where the community can really meet, and we have no place. Uh, that defines that. Um, so I certainly have an interest in it and I, I'm sure others do too. Um, it's, I guess when you talk about how we spend our time is, you know, is, you know, what is realistic in terms of creating the plaza. I know at one time, Supervisor Gordon, uh, Gorin, and I can't remember whether it was at a spring specific meeting or one of our meetings here, uh, had mentioned, uh, I, I, I may have some news about that. And um, I know at one time uh, where the repair shop is uh, next to uh, the, the parking area, 
that the county at one time had the opportunity uh, to buy that parcel. This was many, 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 many years ago uh, and, and never moved forward on it. I, I, I don't know the particulars. Maybe it was a rumor, but I had heard that. Maybe Ellen has uh, some historical reference to that. But I think a plaza, um, I mean, we've all dreamed of having a plaza. To be very honest, where Domino's is, I would love to get a grant or bring somebody in, uh, an investor, to buy that building from the current owners and, and have that space that is available to be a cultural and art center for the entire community. I mean, those are big plans and, and big dreams, but if you don't dream it, it won't happen. So uh, certainly I think the plaza and I see Mari Carmen <laughs> shaking her head. Yes, um, I think that would be a, a worthwhile venture. Um, so, so I just want to read into record um, the comment from Diana, and then we'll get back to this. Um, just wanted to say, on behalf of the Catalyst Fund, we are impressed with the Max work and are thrilled to be able to help support the Max work in getting Map Your Neighborhood organized. We hope this funding will help speed up your block organizing and enable you all to gather the additional volunteers you need. Thank you, Diana. Thank you. Okay. Um, El, so El, I Ray. And Iris. Okay. I think Iris, did you have your I hand have, up? Actually, Ellen had her hand or hand up, I think. And yeah, Ellen. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, thanks. You know, I think um, we have a an obligation actually to move forward on the um, on the plaza. Uh, from the standpoint of the Sonoma Valley Citizen Advisory Council meeting that some of us uh, attended and knowing that they uh, disallowed uh, dominoes on the basis that this community has been fighting for years to develop that area. And when I heard them stand behind the community, I was obviously very grateful for that. Um, but I also felt, yes, we are really obligated to move forward on that. Um, it was always part of the the original, it's, it, it predated the spring specific plan. It was part of the plan that was put together in uh, um, like 1990 and then again in 2008 approved by the supervisors Then again for the spring specific plan. Obviously I do have a, a fair amount of information about it. Um, but one of the things that I'm particularly interested in it, uh, in about it is the fact that um, there is a, there was a funding mechanism for it with our tax dollars and a bond that had been issued. And I was interested in having, um, I'm looking for his name right at the moment. The person who is the chair of the oversight board um, that oversees the funding, the original funding that was um, going to be used for the plaza. Um, Chris Rogers, I believe his name is. Um, I would like him uh, to speak to us about whether that original funding still is associated with that plan in our community. And Avram, the uh, comment that you made about Susan saying that there was some budget, that was at an SCA meeting. I think it was the last SCA meeting that, that was held um, where it wasn't the original $2 million. Uh, she was talking about what she said was a bit of money that had been set aside, but there was um, a request of the community in 2017 to come forward uh, to fight for the original $2 million uh, that had been left over from the project. And it was Susan asking us to come forward to the Board of Supervisors and support her 
in keeping that money in our community for a plaza. So we have, as far as I can determine in looking at the oversight board data, that money is still in existence and still associated with the original bond. If, and it isn't there, I guess the question is, where did it go? Because it still is associated with this approved expenditure. This was that approved, would be, approved. That would be a great thing for the newly formed ad hoc to invest. <laughs> So, um, what's the next Susan, the next Susan, comment? Susan would like to speak. Hi. Um, well, um, the story is yes, Ellen. You you go back uh, further than I do. Um, the story is a little less complicated than that, I think. But you're right. I did ask you and other folks to come to the board of supervisors in an effort to save the two million dollars, and indeed, we were successful. Uh, so that money is still in an account waiting for the community plaza. Uh, I had hoped uh, to have the spring specific plan approved and then move that forward with the in that location. And God knows when that will happen. Um, if we quit having fires so Permit Sonoma could actually finish that work. Uh, and have it not be litigated by the Donald neighborhood, that would be great. Uh, but um, I, I would think the, the, the next step would be if uh, a subcommittee or an ad hoc committee of this group wants to come together, then let's talk about with county council and with the county what that would look like, uh, what kind of how do we issue an RFP for a design con concept? How do we specify a budget for design and construction? So there's some legal work that's necessary. Um, that, that area is a county owned parcel. And I have uh, talked with the owner, Jack Metalinas of the Center Plaza building, alerting him a couple of times that at some point, some part of that parking lot will be considered for um, for construction of a plaza. And, but I would love to work with the ad hoc committee uh, to investigate from the county how we might move it forward and how we need to do what we need to do legally in order to design and construct something there. If in fact, that's what this community wants to do. Maite. So I see this, as, thank you, Susan. Um, I'm glad that you're supportive of this effort. I see this as actually part of, we've had this race conversation and this conversation about a sustainable community and a healthy and vibrant community. And I see this as an opportunity for us to bring all of the facets of our community together in this effort. It's a place for people to gather. We have to be gathering outside more now in our new COVID world. So it's, and we can have, we can actually put our community to work in helping volunteer and make this this project a reality. So I see it bringing together some of the different things that we've been talking about with this group. Um, so I think it's a great opportunity. So I hope that there, that interest um, turns into an ad hoc committee. Right. <laughs> and then Iris. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I would be pleased to work on this ad hoc committee. And uh, I think it would be great to work with Ellen on this since we did this, what, back in 2008, Ellen, I think? <laughs> <laughs> and again, and again, and again. <laughs> yeah. So we would just be bringing it right back around. Uh, anyway, uh, I'm I'm happy to to step up for that. Um, if I may, through the chair before Iris, I just want to remind everyone that the topic of the plaza it's is not on the agenda. So we're discussing interest in the ad hocs, not necessarily the plaza and other. Um, topics that may come up. So just reminding everyone of Brown Act violation. So we just want to be sure that we're forming that. Karina. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. So uh, I appreciate that, Karina. We get excited. Um, so uh, 
Iris, is your we can't talk a lot about the plaza. You can endorse the idea of the ad hoc committee. I would endorse that because I, I look at this. Um, it would be a highly visible place for the uh, for a map your neighborhood group to meet uh, and to have a little a little uh, fair on map your neighborhood. So there there I've got map your neighborhood in there. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, any other comments? No hands. We also wanted to discuss the possibility of a fire safe council ad hoc. So we're kind of looking at three at this point, and the survey gets blended in to a couple of them. We're not losing sight of it, but but Clearly repackaging. Coordinate our communications, right? Yeah. yeah. So we're looking at a plaza ad hoc, a fire safe council ad hoc, and the continuation of the emergency preparedness ad hoc. Um, and that is that it, I don't know if I'm making a motion or if I'm just making a suggestion at this point. I think I'm just making a suggestion at this point to hear what people have to say. Ellen. And then John. I would, defi I would definitely like to work on the uh, plaza. That would be a dream come true uh -huh. if I could work on that. John. I'll, well, there's so much interest for the plaza. I'll take fire safe safety. I, I could use some help on fire safe council, and I think that your expertise would be key. Yeah, yeah. happy to join you. Thank you. So, should we make a motion? Avram. Yeah, I, I just wanted to be clear in my earlier comments that I would really love to be on that plaza committee with Ryan and Ellen. I just wanted to make that known, <laughs> clarify it. it. I've already got it in my notes. I kind of figured that's what you were going to want. OK, um, can, I make a, can I make a motion, then, that we are reconfiguring the ad hocs to now be Fire Safe Council, Plaza, and emergency preparedness. I'll and second. Then we'll, okay. Oh, would you, okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Everybody. Okay. Now, Karina, I have a question, or Ryan, one of you can maybe answer this. Now, people wanting to be on these ad hocs, now would they need to be, now is this a nominating process and we have to agree to it? I thought I remembered that from the last time we did this, but I'm not positive. Yes, if, and if I'm mistaken, um, luckily we have Supervisor Lauren here tonight to correct me, but I believe that is the process. Okay, so does somebody nominate themselves or how does that part work? Could I nominate Ryan and Ellen and Avram to be on the Plaza Council? And I'll second that. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. And I no I nominate John and Ray to be on the Fire Safe Council ad hoc. I second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And then for emergency preparedness. I believe that Iris and Mari Carmen are definitely still interested in continuing that work with Map Your Neighborhood. Yes. Is that correct? And Ellen, Ellen's raising her hand. Well, I'm raising my hand because I'm curious if the work that I am doing potentially with um, Next Door would be part of emergency preparedness. Or am I just a contributor to an ad hoc? I think at this point you might be a contributor. Okay. Because you're gonna have your hands full. You've got a big one now. And I we want I think what we want to do with your permission is take your work and incorporate it into what we're doing and how we're make how we're getting that information back. Would that be acceptable to you? It is. Okay. 
And okay. Mike, are you still going to be with the emergency preparedness or are you bailing? Well, this, no, no, this is what I wanted to ask. And since uh, Karina and Susan are both here, um, I have a strong affinity to, they told me, I've been told I can't do everything. So um, that, that's been made very clear to me. So I'm wondering, can I be like a liaison between the fire safe and the emergency preparedness so I can help with both of them with the communication part of it? Susan, thumbs up us, thumbs that, up that idea, yeah. That actually is the role of the chair. You don't wanna surf on those, but you need to check in with them to make sure uh, what they're doing. Okay, so I could attend their meetings and talk to them and, and be a part of it, but not necessarily be the heavy lifter. Well, attending a meeting is time consuming, of course. Um, and it's and it's up to you. You can do that. Gee, you have infinite time, Maite. <laughs> I want to be you. <laughs> okay. All right. That's, that's that's what I'm think. That's what I'm thinking. So I would not. I would because I do have very strong connections to both of those going up. I the plot. If I could do the plot, and I'll check in with the plaza folks. But there are already three on that committee. So I want to do the plaza too, man. As an architect, I know we all do. That's hard. But it's in very good hands with Avram and Ellen and Ryan. I trust that team. Well, yes, I, well I would say you all are going to be involved in that effort. Um, it's not just two people are going to be designing the plaza. Uh, the, the, the purpose of an ad hoc committee is to actually get some of the details together and then report back to the MAC about how the process is moving forward and then when it actually does move forward, then you'll all get to play in that playground. Right on. Okay, great. Okay, so we now have three new ad hoc committees. Um, and if, when we come back together, at the next topic is holiday schedule. Is there any public comment on the ad hocs that we've just created before we move on? Any members of the public wish to make a comment? please use the raise hand feature and we will attempt to allow you to speak. Um, if not, you can text me. <laughs> or text my text. Uh, si hay alguien en la comunidad eh, que necesita o, o quiere hacer un comentario público, por favor use la aplicación de levantar mano y le vamos a dar autorización para hacer su comentario. I don't see any hands, Chair. Okay. Um, We'll go to the holiday schedule then. Um, so we have, um, last year we adjusted the holiday schedule because people were traveling and um, we weren't all in our homes. Um, so this year we have a meeting scheduled for, Karina, do you have the dates that you're at just easily available? It looks like November 24th. That's what I have. I have November 24th. It would be the, the Tuesday before Thanksgiving and then the following month, December, it would be the 22nd, which is the Tuesday before um, Christmas. So I'm rec my recommendation is to hold those two meetings because there is so much work that we are involved in right now. Um, but I wanted to hear from the group. I feel the same way that um, we, we have a lot of work to do and I would I don't want to miss a meeting. So I, I don't think most I don't think most of us are gonna be traveling this year. So one of us is lucky to get away, we'll celebrate their their trip their departure and, and can carry on. Yeah. yeah. I'm okay Anybody? with it. Okay. Anyone else have an objection or concern about holding the two meetings? I don't have an ob objection or concern. I can guarantee November, not so much December. Okay. If I may through the chair, there is also an option to hold the meeting the week prior. Um, it's up to the council members, um, but I wanted to throw that out there. The week prior to the 22nd of December? Yes, so you can have the, the meeting a week early because we will have enough time to post um, the change. 
So you could hold potentially both of those meetings a week prior. That's a nice option. Yeah. Let me look what's at the, the dates. What's the notice on that? Do we have to make that decision today? The yeah, 17th. we kind of do. Yeah, it's October. It's the 17th and the 15th. So you have the option of holding the November meeting a week early on the 17th or keep it on the 24th. And the same goes for December. You can have it the week prior on the 15th or keep it on the 22nd. Those are school board meetings, both those Tuesdays, if that makes a difference to anyone. Except you. It, I, it does for the 17th. I have to present at the board meeting. Okay. Well, then I would suggest keeping the 24th and maybe discussing December. I agree with that. I agree. I agree with that too. Okay, so what I think I hear us saying is that we will hold the meeting on the 24th of November as scheduled, but on the December meeting, we will hold it on the 15th. Yes, ma'am. Correct. Do we have to vote on that, Karina? Yes, because it's a resolution. Okay, so the I, I'm the motion is to hold the November meeting on the 24th and hold the December meeting on the 15th. Is there a second? I second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. So we, thank you. We've changed the December meeting. Karina, the invitation can now go, now go out to the superintendent. She would only be able to attend the November meeting. She would not be able to attend the December meeting. Uh, who was the second on that? Oh, I don't, I'm not sure. What? Was, uh, Ryan? Ryan and I both said it. Okay, thank you. Okay. All right, thank you. So uh, we have two more agenda items, uh, community event announcements. Karina, did you want to talk about the, you want to mention the charla again? I do, but I do want to open up um, the opportunity for members of the community to um, provide any community updates. You can use the raise hand feature and uh, we'll allow you to make that comment or announcement. Um, and yes, one more time, just inviting everyone in the community to help us spread the word. On Thursday, Supervisor Gorin's team will hold an all Spanish community conversation around COVID with special guest Juan Maragán. Una vez más, a los miembros de la comunidad les queremos hacer la invitación este jueves de cinco y media a siete, charla comunitaria con invitado especial Juan Maragán, con información y recursos, asistencia financiera y dónde hacerse la prueba de COVID. Los esperamos a través de Zoom eh, y Facebook. Thank you. And I don't see any raised hands. So we move on to council members. Okay. Okay. Um, future, oh, any council members? My apologies. I see no raised hands. Thank you. So uh, future agenda items for um, our upcoming meetings. We are going to invite the superintendent to talk about equity in school at one of the meetings. Go ahead. Anyone else? John, did you did you have a? Yeah, was, are we are we considering uh, uh, Supervisor Gorin's suggestion on the sheriff and the was it the Cal Fire or the Cal Fire? Yeah, we will. Yes, thank you, John. Um, yeah, that's, we'll, that's a good take. And then Mary we'll, uh, Marty? Uh, yes, um, could we at one point invite Rocio, the director of the Sonoma County Co-Ed, to maybe she can explain to us her experience during the, the two previous fires. Um, What's her name? Sorry, Rocio? Uh, Rocio Isabel, I I don't remember her last name, I, um, but I'll send it okay. to Karina. Okay, thank you. Anything else? 
Well, the discussion on the plaza, sorry, the discussion on the plaza would be an ad hoc yes. discussion, correct? Okay, so that's going to be okay. We'll um, be giving a report on that. Uh, actually, I had asked Karina if she could send out to all of you, which she did, the original redevelopment advisory committee's uh, project list. But Karina gave us a project list tonight, which was fine. So I'm thinking we don't, I was going to put it on the agenda to actually just take a look at what had been done in the past. But the reporting that, that she provided was fine. Um, the only other thing that was part of that, uh, uh, the RAC project list was, was kind of an itemization of the things that needed attention. So I would recommend that, um, that, I don't know if that's another ad hoc committee or what, but I would recommend that we actually have just a, an ongoing list of things that it occurs to us, whether they're big or small, um, concern us. So I don't know if we wanna put that on the agenda. I don't know if it's worthy of it, but uh, that is a suggestion of mine that we talk about that and organize that. Our room. Uh, yeah, uh, just a, a couple things. One, um, I had mentioned earlier about the Matson projects. Um, it's been a while uh, since I've heard about the Boys Springs project, uh, and it looks like that seems to be moving along. Um, I think the person uh, that presented to um, Springs Community Council, I, I want to say his first name is Tim. Um, and maybe Alan knows his last name, but it would I, I would appreciate him because both those projects are going to have an impact in the springs, and it would certainly be good to get an update and an overview from them as as to what's happening. Uh, so I would suggest that. Um, also, uh, we we do we're, we're you know, and this may come under the fire prevention ad hoc. Um, I think we need to start. Hopefully, we can get through this fire season without any more calamities. Um, is talking about proactive solutions in terms of fire prevention. Um, the the state fire marshal they used to come by. I don't know what happened. I, I was charged like one hundred and ten dollars a year for them to come by and look at my property and say yay or nay, or you should do this or that. I don't know whatever happened with that. I thought that was supposed to go on yearly. Uh, but, you know, the, our canyon right in here, Agua Caliente Canyon runs right through the springs. And we haven't had a fire here since 1972. And it's right, unfortunately. And if it gets here, it's going to burn all the way to Sonoma. And so I think it's really imperative that we have somebody either from the state or somewhere talking about how we as a community can do some things. And to be very honest, I think the state should get involved uh, also uh, in, in some way of creating grants or something to help homeowners make their places more fire safe. Um, it, it's just critical because if we don't do it, and that fire comes here, Susan, we're in big doo-doo. I don't know if you want to put that in the notes, but <laughs> it's just, uh, I think we have to be proactive. Um, Any uh, other items? Iris and Ellen. I, I would say that um, I agree with Ram. Um, just walking around, the, uh, just walking down to the highway, there are places where there's old wood piled up with debris and things like that. There are some um, homes where obviously the um, home homeowners don't have enough money to keep their property clean. We, you know, uh, in, in some ways we need to find a way to um, get some debris cleanup done um, in a no fault way because uh, especially- oh. So that's a great topic for, it's not on the agenda. So it's a great topic for the ad hoc. We got, we're talking right now, I, we're at any agenda items for the future. 
Well, that sort of is one. Ellen? Right. I got it. I just want to mention Tim Sloat is the person that Avram was asking about uh, for the Batson projects. Tim Sloat um, would be more than eager to come here, talk to us. Any other topics? I see no more raised hands. Okay, great. I would like to hear from Tim Sloat though. Definitely. Tim Sloat is associated with the math project. Okay, got it. Yeah. Okay. He works for the math. Uh, okay, so I've heard uh, Cal Fire, Sheriff and Chris Godley, Sonoma Coad, Rocio Isabel, Superintendent Shields, um, ongoing list of needs, Madsen projects update with Tim Sloat, and some um, information about fire prevention and what that means for our community and um, what might be available to help folks be more um, proactive in that area. Did I get it all? Ted's, Ted's nodding. Okay, good. All right. Um, so do I have a motion to thank you all very much for your participation today. It was a great meeting. I think we got a lot done today and lots of good work happening. So thank you very, very much. And thank you to the attendees who stuck with us during the meeting. So um, do we have a motion to adjourn? I'll make an motion to adjourn. Yeah. I'll second. I'll second it. Uh, all in all in uh, favor? Aye. Aye. <laughs> okay. We'll see you on the 24th of November. Um, don't forget to meet with your ad hocs. Thank you. Meeting adjourned. Thank I, you. I sent you uh, Tim's contact information. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.